much to do and share. It's from presidents of countries to athletes to children to prisoners. I haven't lost a suicide in 38 years of thousands. I don't say that to brag, it's not going to prove me, and it's me doing my part, understanding those elements. But I say this to you because if we grow and if we give, we go by. The thing I want to tell you is there are two states I believe in life, only two. And you got to identify this if you want to end the suffering for yourself and those you love. And it starts with ending in ourselves. I believe, you can pray to God, that God has already given us the tools, we have to do our part. And so that way of ending suffering is to make a decision. There's two states. There are beautiful states of being. That's not just happiness, beautiful states. You know, I'm not always happy. It could be creative, it could be passionate, it could feel hunger, it could feel the sense of grace, it could be creativity, it could be love, it could be joy, it could be determination. They're all beautiful states, because you're in the beautiful state, you do the right thing and no one has to tell you what to do. No one has to guide you. It's instinctive. It's our creator coming through us. And then there are suffering states, and those are not God. That's man, that's us, that's our minds. And suffering states, all of us in this room are achievers, and of course, achievers never suffer. We never use that word. I wouldn't use that word until a year ago, ever with myself. I got the most incredible life, the most blessed life. But yeah, do I get pissed off, frustrated, and overwhelmed at times? Yeah. You know? But I thought that's part of the territory. I, I found that it's not. I found that there's a decision you can make to free yourself. That the only way we suffer is when we focus on ourselves. When you focus, the most, the most selfish human being on earth is the one who commits suicide. They think about no one but themselves. To be depressed. We often will say we're depressed because our kids aren't doing well. We're depressed because we feel like we failed our kids. It's about us. When it's not about you and you're in a beautiful state, if there's a problem, you'll solve it. You'll find a way out of the resources. But in a suffering state, the mind takes over. And so the invitation that came by via this little Skype to offer you, and it's not because I'm so smart, it's probably because I made so many mistakes that I'm so free today, is that if you want, you can make a decision. You can draw a line in the sand, and you can decide to live in beautiful states every day, no matter what. I think that decision is more important than what you need for your dinner table tonight and how to help us. Uh, I think you need everything perfect for your dinner table and be a vegan or vegetarian or perfect and still get cancer. Right? So I, I, I want to make sure that no matter what happens to you, you can live in a beautiful state. That's the real mastery. Um, you know, it's not it's more important than who you spend time with, what type of being shapes you. It's more important than who you pick for the love of your life to marry. And Kim and I are both blessed in this area. We've got the right ones. Thank God. Thank you. Really thank God on that. But the truth of the matter is, that's still not it because you could lose your wife or husband. You could lose a family member. You could lose everything. But if you can decide to live in a beautiful state, no matter what, if you can draw that line in the sand, I always say you want to take the island and burn the boat. Nowhere to go back and go forward. And you will not tolerate that. That's a 90 second rule. Suffering shows up. Frustration, overwhelm, pissed off, worry. You know, I had so much pain the other day. I looked at my arm, I didn't know what the hell to do. But you know what? I just like, okay, there's pain and there's suffering. I'm not going to suffer. The suffering be, why did I do this? How stupid was I? Why did this happen to me? Oh my God, I'm going get down. All those things I would have done in the past. And this time I'm just like, okay, I have learning, I got to heal, let me figure out in a beautiful state how I can still serve those that I love and those that I have the privilege to serve. So you and I both know there's so many people, Ken, you and I have met over the years, you know, Big V, most of you know, was born in Australia, and he's a motivational speaker, really just a beautiful Christian, born with no arms and no legs, suicidal, but he finds through the Lord a way not to suffer anymore because he's here to serve someone. Whenever we're serving, it's not about us, and there's no man. Tony Robbins, this guy that gets on stage for 50 hours in a weekend, he never suffers. I just so excited to bring him home. <laughs> I couldn't talk before he ever suffered. I just thought it's part of it. I've always said, and always truly been honest, I have the most magnificent blessed life. And what I've decided is, you know, Ken, as you all know, you can't manage something you don't measure. And I measure my beautiful state every day. Is it beautiful? Is it suffering? If something comes up, 90 seconds and I do a very simple thing. I step in and I remember the truth. I remember that suffering comes from the illusion of loss. Thinking something has happened. I've done something, someone else has done something, but that means less love, Be less careful love. Careful of that. Yes, I'm getting so much pain, I don't care. <laughs> 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 It's the place inside you where I, 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 I know that 
Suffering is thinking you want something, you cause someone to lose something. You're going to have less love, less forgiveness, less impact, less health, less something, or you're never going to have something, and it's an illusion. God doesn't create that in our lives. We create that in our heads. And I, the way I alter it is I breathe. I take three deep breaths, about two minutes of breath in my heart, which changes your biochemistry, so if you know about heart math, you breathe in your heart, your mind and your heart come together. You look at an EEG, an EKG, and when you're stressed, they're all over the place. You breathe for two minutes in your heart, and they completely align. In that state, I really believe you create the vessel for God to speak through you more clearly through your heart. And a lot of times I do that, I do three things. I, if I'm suffering, it's pretty hard to run to enjoyment. If it's too big a jump. So I, I appreciate something. I appreciate God, I appreciate the moment, I appreciate the breath, I appreciate the wind, I appreciate my children, I appreciate the environment, I appreciate being with you. I have a, once I appreciate, it moves into enjoyment. My whole belief in the stage of my life is, if I can't find ecstasy in this moment talking to you, if I can't find ecstasy in the moment, even the pain in my arms, more of something else in the future, more love, more acknowledgement, more friends, more food, more whatever, Achievement is not going to fulfill me anymore. I mean, it's my job to do that every moment. I measure it every moment. And I can only tell you, I'm trying to describe something until you experience it that might sound like positive thinking BS, but it's not. It's freedom. It's the freedom that our heart of the Lord has offered us. But with so many people praying about they don't do their part. It's our job. We've been given this gift. So you look at, you know, some of you may remember Abby, the woman, the, the man, the little boy that uh, Oprah interviewed several times before he died. He had that Benjamin Button disease where, you know, he, he was growing older every day. He was, I think he died when he was 11 or 12. Supposed to die when he was 7. And this little boy, I think Oprah, I think he because this little boy, aging as a man, at this hyper speed, and bone so brittle, had so much love. So he didn't suffer. He really didn't suffer. And the reason is, his life was about a mission beyond himself. And I don't care if it's Nelson Mandela, you know, I asked him when I met him years ago, I never forgot it. I said, you know, President Mandela, I said, how did you survive those 24, 25 years in prison? And he's a very tall man, I'm six, seven, and he's very big. He stood up and he had this horrible defense face. And I thought, what did I do to insult him? He looked me in the eye, this incredible intensity, I'll never get as long as I live, and he said, I didn't survive, I prepared. 